Hello and welcome to part 12 of the walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro. Uh, at the end of the previous part, um, there may have been a time issue, so I'll just backtrack slightly to say we were trying to open a safe, the combination of which is a perfect square and a perfect cube. And we tried 0 and 1, which uh, might be per said to be perfect squares and perfect cubes, and that didn't work. We tried 64 which is the square of 8 and the cube of 4, perfect square, perfect cube. And it said that there's a buzzing sound from behind the safe door, but it remains securely closed. So we're on the right track. So let's try 729, which is the square of 27 and the cube of 9. There's a buzzing sound from behind the safe door, but it remains securely closed yet again. So we still haven't hit on the right combination. And I guess that's the point, really, of this exercise. It's to get uh, players of the game, uh, initially school children originally, to find these numbers and to work out how to find these numbers and to calculate them. And of course, ideally, I suppose, to do that without using calculators. I mean, we certainly weren't allowed always to use calculators in school. And, I, of course, the other point I wanted to make at some stage was to uh, just observe that we didn't have the internet either. So games like this are actually much easier when you have access to the internet. I mean, easier to cheat on, I suppose, because you can look up things like dodecahedrons and icosahedrons and perfect squares and cubes. And, I, you know, that's a legitimate thing to do, I think, as long as you learn and remember what you've looked up, um, as long as you find it interesting and you're not just trying to whiz through a game because you have to, for some reason. Um, so anyway, this is the purpose of this exercise. It's to teach you about perfect squares and perfect cubes. So let's try 4096. And lo and behold, the safe door has swung open to reveal a passageway going north. 4096. Uh, which is what we tried, is in fact the square of 64, the cube of 16. And that did the trick. So we can now enter this revealed passageway to the north. You're at the south end of a passage just inside the safe door. The passage has a strange soft appearance because the floor, walls and ceiling are completely covered in a deep carpet. Well, well. Can we, in fact, look carpet in this case? Because it was... No, it doesn't understand carpet, even though it specifically pointed it out as an object of interest. Dear me, dear me. Um, let's uh, go north, then. That's all we can do. You're at the north end of the soft passage outside a wooden door. Let's enter, can we? Yes, we don't need a key. You are in a square room which is full of cobwebs. The only door leads south. A huge black spider is hanging by a thread from the ceiling. The spider says, I have something here that may help you, but the Drogos have made it invisible. Would you like me to help you to find it? Well, a massive talking spider is asking us if it were, if we would like it to help us. Well, in ordinary circumstances, uh, well, you'd be hallucinating, and so it wouldn't matter. So let's pretend we're doing that and say, yes, we'd like it to help us. If I spin a special web, says the spider, that encloses this room, the Drogo's magic will be defeated. You can see this room has four edges where the walls join, four edges where the walls meet the floor, and another four edges where the walls meet the ceiling. I must spin a silk thread that passes along each of these twelve edges twice, once in each direction. The thread must not be broken, and as I have only a limited supply, I must not go along any edge more than twice. The trouble is, I'm a rather old, short-sighted spider, and you'll have to help me. Now, if you could tell me whether to turn left or right when I reach the end of each edge, I might just manage it. <laughs> Say start when you want me to begin. So, this is a difficult puzzle, and it involves either a lot of experimentation and trial and error, or you could try and write a program to solve it, and it is something that is of interest to follow up. Um, and I leave that as an exercise for the reader, or the listener, or the viewer. Uh, and I'm just simply going to be very lazy and follow the walkthrough, because it is rather complicated. Of course, 
it doesn't matter where the spider is when it starts, even if it's been specified, and previously I can't remember, um, because you just have to tell it to go right or left. So we just say start. Good, says the spider. I have reached the end of the first edge. Tell me whether to go left or right. I mean, the cube is uh, symmetrical in um, multiple ways, so it's, it all works out in the end. Um, it doesn't matter where you imagine the spider started from. So anyway, we're going to go right. We're going to go right again. And we're going to go left. So that makes four edges so far. We're going to go right and right and right. And that makes seven edges so far. We're going to go left and right and right and right. And that makes 11 edges so far. We're going to go left and left and right and left. That's 15 edges so far. Right, right right, left, right, right. It's like a very bad army drill, isn't it? Marching in a bizarre manner. Um, 21 edges so far, right, L, R. At last, says the exhausted spider. It creeps away into a hole in the plaster for a sleep. Ah. The room starts to shake, first gently and then more violently. Suddenly, in the middle of the room, appears a small gold ring. Ah, oh, my precious, my precious. Yes, it's my precious. We are going to get the ring, of course. Because carrying the ring has made you and everything you're carrying invisible. And as Darren Izzard informs us, uh, you're now invisible and the game is nearly over. Hooray! I bet you can't wait if you've actually made it this far, if anyone ever bothers to watch this or any of the parts of the walkthrough. Um, so we now have a magic ring. Uh, steady. And we are wearing it and we're invisible. And I wonder where they got that idea from. From the myth of the Ring of Gaijas, of course. And south and south again, we're retracing our steps. Back in the room with the safe, and back to the circular room. And now the final exit from the circular room, which we hadn't tried before, is south. So here we go. This is the end game, guys. Are you excited? You're in a narrow passage running from north to south. The north door is closed, and we just went through it, but the south door is ajar. Through the crack, you can see about a dozen Drogo robot guards. Ooh, scary. However, we are invisible. Um, and we do have Runia's hair still, don't we? I don't know if that matters. I really don't. But in any case, um, we're invisible, so that should be of some help. Uh, and we go in through the dangerous Drogo-infested uh, area. You're in a shabby room decorated with posters. Against one wall are racks of electronic equipment studded with glowing coloured lights. There are doors to the north and west. About a dozen Drago robot guards are in an untidy line beneath a huge poster of a middle-aged lady who's smiling resolutely. Well, who is this lady? Smiling resolutely. Is she the queen? Is it a kind of Alice in Wonderland scenario? I mean, increasingly it feels like one. Uh, various spiders and... Uh, was there a spider in Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> I don't know. Um, but, you know, drink me and disappearing through holes and um, uh, various things like that, really, uh, that I've, uh, I can't quite remember. But, um, and in that case, is this queen? Is this some kind of queen who rules over all and is going to say off with her head and things like that. Or is it S S Margaret Thatcher, uh, who was um, the Prime Minister of the UK at the time? Um, is that... Uh, I think that's quite possibly what you're meant to think, actually. It's just occurred to me. Hmm. A little bit of politics there from the Association of Teachers of Mathematics, quite possibly. Um, anyway, we're here. We're here. And where are the doors to the north and west? So I think, because we're invisible, we're safe from the Drogos, so we can go west unhindered. You're in a sparsely furnished cell. A window is open, but it's too high for you to jump, and there's no way to climb down. 
A girl with red hair is sitting in one corner. Ha ha! Our quest, the object of our quest. We have found her. We have found her. Now we're going to sweep her off her feet and uh, end the game. A drop ring. You are no longer invisible. The girl says, I'm Runia. The abbot told me about you in a smuggled message. Hmm, well, uh, you know, if you can actually communicate, <laughs> and you've been able to communicate all this time, Abbot, why didn't you help me? I've been blundering about making mistakes like an absolute fool. Anyway, Runia continues, I'm glad you got here safely. We must be quick. Give me the rope ladder. Runia fixes the rope ladder to the window, and you both climb to the foot of the palace. A Drogo robot guard appears at the window, but does not follow you. It's late afternoon and still very hot. The only noise is the buzzing of insects. In the distance, your sister is still reading her book. Clearly obsessed with fractions and the four rules. I mean, uh, laudable, I suppose. She may well end up becoming an accountant, uh, and so good for her. Do you want to know more? Nah. Yes, go on then. There's still much to discover. What has happened to the abbot? Yes, a good question. Who are the Drogos? Another, another good question. And what did Runia discover about them? Did she discover something? Uh, was that said at the beginning? It's such a long time ago. Uh, what is in the Kempis room? Do I care? And what's the meaning of the strange symbols on the pendant which Runia wears around her neck? It'd be nice to see that. Uh, you know, well, yes, anyway. Uh, but all excellent questions, and I can't wait to find out what the answers are. So let's read on. But I'm afraid I cannot help you answer these questions. This adventure is over, and what remains is for your, for your imagination. Goodbye. And that, dear friends, is the biggest anticlimax to an adventure that you could possibly imagine. Uh, well, I'm sure you could imagine worse. Uh, but it, you are actually um, dumped out to the... Um, to, to the basic prompt, I believe, and uh, you know you can you can probably uh, you know do the standard things. Uh, yes, I mean this is this is the basic prompt, so that's the end, and you're unceremoniously dumped into the prompt, and that's the end of the adventure, which is somewhat abrupt and disappointing, and doesn't answer any of the questions. Uh, that it is that the game itself poses. Um, so I don't know what to make of that. Nevertheless, it has been a very interesting playthrough. Uh, in a sense, uh, well, it was for me. I'm sure it wasn't for you. But um, I can only apologise for how long this has taken and how dull, quite possibly, you may have found it. Um, and, you know, th there are questions left unanswered. I Let me say, uh, first of all, I did greatly enjoy this game. I have a lot of affection for it. It's quite nostalgic for me um, to revert to that uh, period of my uh, childhood at school when we played this game. It was quite fun. It was a group activity, and it was the only fun thing about maths. Um, I don't know if it was actually a maths lesson or just some kind of uh, break time uh, activity. Uh, but anyway, it's... Um, it brought back some memories and uh, some um, memory. Well, well, some just just showed me that I'd forgotten quite a lot about the game. Uh, but it was uh, fairly pleasant to find out, and I think it. I think it works. I think it does work. It's quite a rich game. Uh, some challenging puzzles there. A lot of ideas. A lot of uh, descriptive. Uh, room descriptions, uh, descriptive descriptions, yes. Uh, a lot of well-written room descriptions, uh, some of them quite evocative, some of them fairly almost haunting in their emptiness and eeriness. Um, but there are still several things to say about this game, um, and I'll do that in the final wrap-up part of the walkthrough, and I'll see you then.